15 Math Mistakes That Fool Everyone, Even Experts, Even You. Over the next 14 minutes, I'm going to show you errors hiding in plain sight, proofs that seem bulletproof until they explode, and paradoxes so bizarre they broke the foundations of mathematics itself. From square roots to set theory, from calculus traps to unsolved conjectures. Buckle up. This is going to be wild. Mistake number one, the square root identity. Most people instinctively believe that the square root of x squared is simply x. This seems correct, but it hides a subtle flaw. To see why it's wrong, let's test it with a negative number like x equals negative 3. First, we substitute negative 3 for x. We need to evaluate the square inside the root. Negative 3 squared is positive 9. The principal square root is, by definition, always the non-negative result. Therefore, the square root of 9 is positive 3. But this leads to a contradiction. We found the result is 3, not the original x value of negative 3. The initial identity failed. The correct identity is that the square root of x squared is the absolute value of at x. Next, a classic fallacy. I'm going to prove that 1 equals 2. Your job is to spot the illegal move. We begin by assuming two variables, a and b, are equal. Let's multiply both sides by a. This gives us a squared equals a times b. Now we subtract b squared from both sides. This results in a squared minus b squared equals ab minus b squared. Both sides can be factored. The left becomes a difference of squares, a minus b times a plus b, and on the right we factor out a b. Here's the trap. We see the term a minus b on both sides and are tempted to cancel it. Dividing both sides by a minus b, we are left with a plus b equals b. Recalling our initial assumption that a equals b, we substitute. This becomes b plus b equals b, or 2b equals b. Finally, we divide both sides by b, and we arrive at the absurd conclusion that 2 equals 1. The error occurred when we canceled. Since a equals b, the term a minus b is exactly zero. Our cancellation was an illegal division by zero. Algebra can sometimes mask hidden problems. Let's look at a function that appears simpler than it is. Consider the function f of x equals x squared minus 4, all divided by rx minus 2. We can factor the numerator as a difference of squares. This gives us x minus 2 times xx plus 2 in the numerator. It seems like we can just cancel the x minus 2 terms. This simplifies the function to x plus 2. But this is only true for x not equal to 2. So it's not quite a straight line. Let's visualize this. Here is the graph of the line y equals x plus 2. But this graph is misleading. The original function is undefined at x equals 2. Because the original function causes division by 0 at x equals 2, there's a hole, or a removable discontinuity, in the graph. The limit exists, but the function value does not. What if a function was discontinuous not just at one point, but at every single point? Meet the Dirichlet function. It equals 1 if x is a rational number, and 0 if x is irrational. It's impossible to truly visualize. Let's attempt to plot a few points to understand its chaotic behavior. The blue dots represent rational inputs, where the function is 1. The red dots are irrational inputs, where the function is 0. The problem is that between any two numbers, there are infinite rationales and irrationals. The function incessantly jumps between 0 and 1, making it continuous nowhere. Intuition suggests 
that if a function is continuous, it must be smooth somewhere. In 1872, Karl Weierstrass proved this intuition wrong. He constructed a function, an infinite sum of cosine waves, with a shocking property. This function is continuous everywhere, with no breaks, but it's differentiable nowhere. It has a sharp corner at every single point. Let's visualize an approximation of this mathematical monster. At first glance, it looks jagged, but perhaps manageable. The jaggedness never smooths out. It has a fractal-like self-similarity. No matter how close you look, you'll never find a smooth segment to define a tangent line. In multivariable calculus, the path you take matters. Does the order in which you take a limit change the answer? Let's investigate the limit of xy over x squared plus y squared as x and y approach zero. First, let's approach the origin along the x-axis, letting y go to zero first, then x. First, we evaluate the inner limit by setting y to zero. This simplifies to the limit of zero, which is zero. Now, let's try a different path, approaching along the line y equals x. We substitute x for y in the expression. This simplifies to the limit of one-half, which is one-half. Since we got different results from different paths, the overall limit does not exist. The order matters. Sharp corners on graphs pose a problem for derivatives. Let's examine the most famous example. The absolute value of x is defined as x for non-negative values and negative x for negative values. This definition gives us the characteristic v-shape at the origin. The derivative is the slope. What is the slope at x equals zero? From the left, the function is y equals negative x, so the slope is negative one. From the right, the function is y equals x, so the slope is positive one. The left-hand limit of the derivative is negative one, while the right-hand limit is positive one. Since they don't match, the derivative at x equals zero does not exist. Prepare for a function that defies intuition, nicknamed the devil's staircase. This function is flat almost everywhere, meaning its derivative is zero. Yet, somehow, it manages to climb from a value of zero to a value of one. The function is constructed based on the Cantor set, a process of repeatedly removing the middle third of line segments. The result is this staircase. It's perfectly flat on the segments that were removed. All of its growth occurs on the points of the Cantor set itself, a set which has a total length of zero, yet contains an uncountably infinite number of points. With a finite number of terms, addition is commutative, but in the infinite realm, this property can vanish. The alternating harmonic series is a famous result. It converges to the natural logarithm of two. But what if we rearrange the terms using a pattern of two positive terms followed by one negative term? This rearranged series converges to a completely different value. Same numbers, different order, different sum. This is a consequence of the Riemann rearrangement theorem. For a conditionally convergent series like this one, you can reorder the terms to make it add up to any number you desire. In the early 20th century, a simple question from Bertrand Russell threatened to bring down all of mathematics. Let R be the set of all sets that do not contain themselves. This leads to a devastating question. Does R contain itself? If R is in R, then it must satisfy the condition for membership, which is that it must not contain itself. A contradiction. If R is not in R, then it is a set that does not contain itself. So by definition, it must belong in R. Another contradiction. This paradox broke naive set theory. This is a mathematically proven theorem so counterintuitive it's often called a paradox.
The Banach-Tarski paradox states, you can take a sphere, break it into a finite number of pieces, and reassemble them into two new spheres, each identical to the original. The trick is that the pieces are not physical objects. They are infinitely complex point sets that don't have a well-defined volume to begin with. The proof relies on the axiom of choice. The paradox highlights the vast chasm between physical intuition and abstract mathematics. This is a famous problem where our intuition about probability leads us astray. How many people do you need in a room for a greater than 50% chance that at least two of them share a birthday? Most people's intuition suggests about half the number of days in a year. This is wrong. The mistake is thinking about matching your birthday. We need to consider any pair of people matching. With just 23 people, there are 253 possible pairs which is a lot of opportunities for a match. The surprising answer is that you only need 23 people for the probability to be over 50%. A common mistake in calculus is applying the fundamental theorem without checking its conditions. Consider the definite integral of 1 over x from negative 1 to 1. A student might find the antiderivative and plug in the bounds getting an answer of zero. The fatal flaw is that the function has an infinite discontinuity at x equals zero, right in our interval. We must split the integral at the point of discontinuity. The integral from the right diverges to positive infinity, and the integral from the left diverges to negative infinity. Since at least one part diverges, the entire integral does not exist. Sometimes, physics demands mathematical objects that seem impossible. The Dirac delta is one such object. Imagine a function that is zero everywhere except at rx equals zero, where it is infinite. And yet, the total area under this infinitely tall, infinitesimally thin spike is exactly one. This isn't a true function, it's a distribution. We can understand it as the limit of a sequence of normal functions, like these Gaussian curves. As we make them narrower, they must get taller to keep their total area equal to 1. The Dirac delta is the conceptual limit of this process. We end with one of the most famously simple to state, yet impossible to prove problems in all of mathematics. Take any positive integer. If it's even, divide it by 2. If it's odd, multiply by 3 and add 1. Repeat this process. The Collatz conjecture is the claim that no matter what number you start with, the sequence will eventually reach 1. Let's try 5. 5 is odd, so it goes to 16, then 8, 4, 2, and finally 1. Despite being tested for quintillions of numbers, no one has proven that there isn't some large number that gets stuck in a loop or flies off to infinity. This simple problem remains completely unsolved. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this journey through 15 mathematical mistakes, please subscribe for more mind-bending math content. Hit that like button if you learned something new, and drop a comment telling me which mistake surprised you the most. See you in the next video.